Hello everyone, as usual, I'm not gonna call this video a review because I'm just a casual amateur fan of plastic mech models. And I'm just gonna be looking at this thing and talking about it. However, I am gonna call this a sponsored video, even though it's kind of technically not, I'm just gonna err on the side of over disclosure because Yolo Park, the company that made this, did send this to me for promotional consideration but that was for Twitch content, which I've already done. I'm doing this video because I want to, uh, as, as a fan of the thing, just like I've done for all, all of the model kits that I've bought up to this point, but I did not buy this one, so I want to be clear about that. There's also an affiliate link and a coupon code in the video description if you're interested in purchasing purchasing this or anything from the series, if you you think you like it. If you don't like it, don't click that. Don't, you know, don't follow through, but enjoy the content regardless. So this is the Optimus Primal. Uh, they, they call this this series AMK, AMK series. Uh, it's a 20 centimeter class or roughly about nine inch tall, 10 at the most, but a little, little bit less than 10 inch tall uh, model. It's kind of halfway in between a buildable model and a uh, an action figure because it's intended for the eight plus age range and it's very simple to put together. So when you get this, it doesn't come like a uh, like a fully assemblable model. It comes in sub-assemblies. So the head is one thing. The upper torso is another thing. Lower torso is another thing. You put the hips on. You put the arms together with major sections. You can swap out the faceplate on this one. I'll show you that. But it's really, really simple to put together. And then it gives you, it gives you action figure style of articulation, but with, in my opinion, more of a model kit level of of detail and, and seriousness and some pretty pretty impressive posability for something that costs thirty dollars us um, this is not transformable it is very very rare to find anything that is not from hasbro or takaratomi that will actually transform because they're very careful uh, to not let that part of the license get out there you know they, they protect that quite a lot so there are a lot of models on on the market that are either statues or Things like this, where they are they are locked to one version of a of a transformer in particular. This is fully licensed. It's all completely legit. It's not like a, a shady uh, third party or anything like that. But I love looking at the detail in this one. Uh, so I got three of these things, and I expected to like this one the least. I like it the most because of whoa, sorry, I have it in a very sketchy pose right now. But all the interior detail because it's because it's you know it's it's primal and he's an ape. I, I thought I would go with kind of the the Monkey King inspired sort of uh, initial pose for it, just, just for the fun of it. Again, just having fun here. So let me go ahead and take it out of this pose and, and show you uh, a little bit of what, what this is just about in general. So again, kind of like kind of like an action figure in, in terms of how hands-on you can get with it. Not quite though. There are some parts that can ultimately pop off, like the, the hands, for example, if you try to overextend them. It's a soft piece. The hand itself is one single uh, one single molded part, I believe it's one part, or they're pre-fused, I think it's one part, and it's a little bit rubbery, so the parts aren't gonna break break off, but ultimately it'll, you know, it'll just pop right off the, the ball joint there. There are a lot of joints on this thing. There's a ball joint underneath here. I'll pop this off right now. There's a ball joint right there to give you the ability to leave more room for the hand uh, to, atar to articulate, and there's also this joint right here, so the ball joint itself is on a on a swivel this has way more articulation than i think it needs for what it's trying to be and what it's trying to do so if i just pop that right back on there you can see it gets in there pretty close the thing that i personally like least about this specific model is the shininess of the fur sections i wish that that was uh, more matte just had a finer texture on top of it so they got the nice fur texture but then in between each each individual element should have been more more satin should have more of a satin finish. There's some nice stuff going on. Like they've got printed, uh, you've got multiple colors of, of gunmetal gray in there and you've got some some printed pistons for the actuators, you know, hydraulic piston uh, or hydraulic rams that control this thing. And then inside there are also multiple multiple joints. So for example, you can see up here, you've got some interesting interesting motion that goes in for the, the secondary inner section of frame for the elbow. So that can give you more extension than it would if it was just a single joint, you know, or more flex rather to bring that in. Uh, this also comes with 
Different hands, I'll show you the different hands. You can see that the, the shoulder is able to move about quite a bit. This pauldron is separate, so you can see inside of there. That rotation, which is pretty much all the way around, you can get it to rotate all kinds of different ways. It can reach behind its back, across the chest, as I showed you early on. All through the body, you've got uh, a ball joint in the middle of the torso. You've got just a single swivel down at the, at the waist. Those are nice. Multiple joints for the neck, so the neck is a separate piece inside of there. And then that can move separately from the head, so the head is able to move forward and back in addition to angling up and down. So you can really get it to tuck down inside of the, the chest armor a little bit. And I pull it forward and then angle it back. Again, the face is able to be swapped out. That's about as far up as I can make it look. That's not too far, right? More would be better there. There is articulation in this collar, interestingly. It just gives you a little bit of extra room to move it around. So you can see this is actually on a, a ball joint back here to give you a little bit of extra room to move the head about so you can <laughs> do some some extra things with that uh down at the legs so the legs interestingly have the ability to extend at the hip so they've got that nice double joint in there to allow you to slide it up and down that gives you a little bit more room to move again to articulate you can even bring this out completely it does a, it does full splits push that back up uh, at the knees, you've got double jointing in there with the second second le level of articulation, a little bit of movement back here. Uh, so some of these armor plates you put on yourself, a handful of them come pre-assembled, but there you look at the, watch the kneecap. So the kneecap, I'll just open it up to give it a little bit extra room just so you can see the frame inside. So this is one joint and then here's another. It's also connected back here to have the, the linkages being being visible as well, put that back in. And then down at the ankles, uh, you've got rotation side to side and forward and back. I think there was one other. Yeah, there's, there's an additional one. So the ankles have that there. It kind of locks into a straight position, but you can also pull it back to get a little bit of extra movement out of it. And then you've got this forward back. Now this is a little bit loose here. I wish that was a little bit tighter. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, toes. So these weird claw side toes are able to move around. That's actually useful, especially if you start to angle things. And then the toes themselves at the front are able to angle a bit. Would have been nice to get more movement than that, especially to be able to, to angle them up more, I think. And these are separate, um, attached from, from the sides. I think that's about it for articulation. Also comes with the weapon, which is in two parts. It's just, uh, you know, basically symmetrical. I'll show you the different hands. There's one other thing that I wanted to point out here. I did mention earlier that the one thing I like least about this is that shine just for the fur sections. So just to show what I would like to see, it's this. This is what I would prefer to see. More of a satin or medium matte kind of finish, uh, which they definitely could have done, but all I did here was just use a, a matte clear Gundam marker uh, on top of that, just to, you know, just to dull it down. It looks so much better to me than, than this does, but it's a relatively small nitpick. Uh, right, so faceplate. This has an alternate faceplate. I'll just get it to stand right there. This is the open mouth one, and then they've got a closed off mouth one here as well. So you just pop the top of the head off, and then this slides out of there. Interestingly, the eyes are molded in. That color separation for the eyes is not a paint or print. You can see it there. It's a a green piece that's actually inserted in. So that's pretty nice. Gives it good consistency. Uh, the print, again, the prints that are on here are are very nice. They're very consistent. They're opaque. The uh, the masking, I think, is very good for this, for this price point. Uh, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's, you know, like this is about as bad as it gets right there. You know, which is still not bad for something that is is, is effectively a, just a toy. And then for hands, so you've got the um, weapon wielding fist there. This is what an open hand looks like. And then you've got an open hand for the other side as well. So both both sides could have open hands left and right. This is a weapon wielder for the left. So you could split apart the weapon and have half and half or go left handed if you want. There's this finger, single index finger out to point, and then there's also a 
fist, so it's a, more of a closed fist, which doesn't look that different from the weapon holder from most angles, I think, but it is it is different enough, and it's you know it's always better to have more options. So yeah, that's that's all pretty nice, and yeah, I think that's about about it for this one. I again I I expected to like this one the least. I I'm not a Beast Wars fan in general. I haven't seen the movie as of the time of the recording of this video, the new movie. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the newer movie for, for sure. But I wasn't a fan of the, the old uh, CG cartoon, the original. I did watch the, uh, the Netflix uh, War, War for Cybertron series, you know, that, that whole series that they did in the, in the 2020s, which took us into the, the Beast Wars space also. Um, I still didn't have that much interest. So... <laughs> bias in favor of the of the source material was very very low but the model i like i like a lot i would love to just detail it just a little bit more and it really feels like something that although it's supposed to be a toy for kids i feel like it's the type of toy for kids that adults can really enjoy also and can really get a lot of use out of uh just the the posing possibilities with this thing are are you know, it's so easy to get it into any kind of weird pose without even without even putting a whole lot of effort into it. You know, uh, and seeing all those all those inner joints moving around and everything—it's just—it has really nice engineering, so it's very satisfying to me. Yeah, but that's it for this one. I will be showing you all three in this. Uh, I, but that's it for this one. I will be showing you all three in this Rise of the Beasts series. So thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.